This is Malcolm341. In today's video, we're going to learn how to extrude polygons inward without overlap. Extruding inward almost always results in overlapping geometry, and I've got a workflow to keep this from happening, so let's get into it. Okay, so first let's have a look at the problem. So I'm trying to model this shape here. So I'm just going to press 3 on the keyboard to go to sub D view. And you can see it's a pretty simple shape. It's got some beveled edges there, whatever. And I want this part of the curve, this part of the curve, and this part of the curve to kind of all be the same size. Here you can see the cage for that, and then that's the low poly for it right there. And this has always been a really challenging shape for me, and I'll show you why. So this is like where I've started, let's say. And if you go to edge mode and select the edge loop here, and then I'm just going to go hold shift and right click and do an extrusion. And if we do an extrude and then we use, what is it, offset? Yeah, if we use offset, everything is all good. See how as it extrudes away, it's getting wider and you can just kind of go as far as you want. It'll never have any issues. You can make it super big or whatever. Just going to undo that. But the issue is if you do it on the inside, so if you want to extrude inward, so same thing, shift, right click, extrude edge, offset, watch what happens. It's all good for a little bit, then right here, really quickly, look at that, see it all overlaps and you're out of luck. Now I need to get the extrusion all the way from there to there, and it's already overlapping there. Like there's no way that I can make that shape using the actual tool, using the parametric offset with the extrude. You can go to like there, let's say, and it's already getting super tight. You also don't want that because when you extrude that down and make it into sub D, it's going to have a pinch there and it's going to look more square. And with my model, I would like it to have the same kind of roundness there, same roundness here and same roundness here. And if I were to pinch all of these points down like this, then you can already see the shape it makes. See, it's nice and round here, but then it's square here. And I don't want that. And so one way that you can do it is you can do the extrusion, wait for the overlap to happen. And then, you know, whoops just go and like manually fix your points or whatever, you know, move them back, just separate those out, do that, whatever. But I also want them to kind of be perfectly aligned with these edges. So I want it to be parametric and I just want it to extrude out, but I want it to follow this angle instead of, you know, like doing this basically going inside of itself. And I have a weird trick to do that, that I came across yesterday. And I just wanted to share it with everyone because this has been a really annoying part of my model. And uh, now that I know how to do this, it's much better. It's not perfect, but it's way better. Let me just delete these faces since they're all messed up now. So I'm just gonna duplicate this mesh and just move it up here for a second. And then I'm going to come down here and grab the edges and just do an extrude and offset. And we'll look for the point of failure so we can compare the two. So it fails like there. It's already failed. It's failed here, but it's also made a square there. So it's not even the right shape, even if it didn't fail. Okay, and then I'm going to select the model and I'm going to right hold click. And then I'm going to go down to actions and select template. So I can't select it anymore. And so we can compare it. If you want it to not be gray, which is kind of the worst color to see, you can select it in the outliner and it will turn pink, which is a bit easier to see. I'm also going to move it up a bit so we can go to the top view later and see this under there. So I'm just going to set this back to zero. Now we can compare the two. So you can look at that and see what's going on there. Next, I'm going to select the original model here, and then I'm going to delete three quarters of it so I can make instances of it. So there I've just got one quarter of the final mesh. And I'm going to load up my custom mirror tool. So just click the mirror button if you've purchased the shelf from my store. If you're not familiar with this tool, it's just a really fast, nice way to make mirror objects and instance objects. If you don't have this tool, you can always just use the built-in Maya tool, but I find this to be a lot better. So I'm going to use mine. So I'm going to make an instance and I'm going to use the world pivot. And so I'm going to instance along X and then Z and then X. So now I have four instances. So anything I do to those verts on any one of these, it's all synced up and they're all instances of one another. Okay, next I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm going to select these border edges. And then if I do an extrude, 
and we use the offset, you can see it's got the same problem. It all overlaps and goes all wonky. So I'm going to leave the extrude there. And then I'm going to come over to the channel box and I'm going to left click translate X and then hold control and left click translate Z. And now if I go back to the viewport and I use the middle mouse, hold it down and scroll left and right, watch what happens. It does the extrusion, but because it's an instance, it does it along the normal of the edges. So look how much better this is. So before you can see we could get to like there. So watch how much further I can get past it. Look at this and see what else is happening. I'm extruding inward, but the curve isn't getting smaller. So with this one, it gets smaller and it crushes down to a single point and then it flips over itself. With this trick, it just keeps going in that direction. So the downside is, is that these edges will eventually like eat into it or whatever, but you can just clean those up manually. So I want it to be like, you know, you can make it kind of as big as you want. You can go just so that edge and this vert don't overlap, if that makes sense. So this edge and that vert can't overlap. So I'm just going to pull it back a bit to around there, let's say, and just accept the change. And now it's super easy. Let's just do a two second cleanup. So we're just going to hold V and snap that there and grab this one and hold V and constrain snap that there. And then same thing over here, grab that one, hold V, constrain snap it there. And we're done. Check it out. So now we've got this nice continuous edge that was extruded out from that point. And when we smooth it, we get a nice smooth edge there and there, and it's the same. And if we compare the two, you can see just how much better that was than the other one. So it's super helpful. I found this like saved me hours of time on my model because I had to do like a bunch of these shapes. I had to do these little inset things and this and then the front and the side. And I had these type of curves all over my model. So it was actually really helpful. It's kind of a weird workflow and it's unfortunate that you have to do a little bit of cleanup, but it's way better than the other result, which was like doing it all by hand. So it's pretty cool. And now you can come into the model and just add the edge loops with the uh, cut polygon tool. So I have a hotkey for that. So I'm just going to add them in. So, you know, whatever, I would do this, add those in, add one in the center, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, take the faces and do whatever you need to do to finish the model off. Do that. There you go. Perfect edge there, perfect edge there. Everything looks great. So super helpful. I hope people find that useful. I wanted to share it right away because it saved me so much time. Just make sure that you instance your model first because it only works on a quarter of a mesh. So if we were to combine all these back into one model, let's say combine, and then selected the internal edges here, did the extrusion, and then you know offset, same problem. Select X, select Z, hold middle mouse, scroll left and right. See what happens? It all goes that way. And so that's the real trick. The trick is because I instanced it four times around, it all goes towards the center. So just something to be aware of. And you might be wondering why we can't just select all of these edges and do an extrude and then switch to the scale tool and then just scale in like that and scale in like that. And you can do that, but see the shape it makes? Look at this wonky curve. Even if you try to get it perfect, eyeball it up, it doesn't matter because it's always shrinking down. It's not following the normal of these edges and going out. So no matter what I do, I don't get the shape that I want. I get like some wonky curve because I want it to be like that. And then I go to this and you can see right away, look how smeary that curve is. And like, look how perfect these two curves are. So I don't know, perhaps there's a better way to do this, but this is the way that I figured out how to do it. And it was quite helpful. If you've got a better way to do it that's parametric and keeps the curve the same between these two with the extrusion, feel free to post it in the comments and that will be really helpful because I'd also love to know if there's a better way to do it. Thanks very much for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel would not exist. If you liked this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad free. See you next time. Have a superb day.